I smoothed my blouse and took a deep breath before stepping into the conference room. The promotion I'd been working towards for years was finally within reach, but the butterflies in my stomach reminded me of everything I stood to lose. Francesca, come in, my boss Richard called out. We've been waiting for you. I plastered on a smile and strode to the empty chair at the head of the table. Sorry I'm late. Traffic was a nightmare. Richard waved off my apology. No worries. We're just excited to share the news. He beamed at me, and I felt a surge of hope. Congratulations, Fran. You're our new regional sales director. The room erupted in applause, but I could barely hear it over the pounding of my heart. I'd done it. After years of long hours and missed family dinners, I'd finally reached the top. Thank you, I managed, my voice thick with emotion. I'm honored and thrilled to take on this new role. As my colleagues offered their congratulations, my phone buzzed in my pocket. I ignored it, focusing on shaking hands and accepting praise. It wasn't until an hour later, when I finally escaped to my office, that I checked the missed calls. Five from Neil, three from the kids' school. My stomach dropped as I dialed Neil's number. He picked up on the first ring. Where have you been? he demanded, his voice tight with anger. I've been trying to reach you for hours. I was in a meeting, I said, guilt washing over me. What's wrong? Are the kids okay? Neil sighed heavily. Tommy's sick. The school called, but they couldn't reach you, so I had to leave work early to pick him up. I closed my eyes, fighting back tears. I'm so sorry, Neil. I should have checked my phone. Yeah, you should have, he snapped. This isn't the first time, Fran. I can't keep dropping everything because you're too busy with work. His words stung, but I knew he was right. I'll make it up to you, I promised. I'm leaving now. I'll be home in twenty minutes. Don't bother, Neil said coldly. I've got it under control. Just, just come home when you're done with whatever's more important than your family. The line went dead, leaving me staring at my phone in shock. Neil had never spoken to me like that before. We'd had our disagreements, sure, but this felt different, dangerous. I grabbed my purse and rushed out of the office, my promotion celebration forgotten. As I navigated through rush hour traffic, my mind raced. How had things gotten so bad without me noticing? When was the last time Neil and I had a real conversation that didn't revolve around schedules or the kids? By the time I pulled into our driveway, my hands were shaking. I took a moment to compose myself before heading inside. The house was quiet when I entered, save for the low murmur of the TV in the living room. I found Neil sprawled on the couch, a beer in hand. Where are the kids? I asked, setting down my purse. Asleep, Neil replied, not looking at me. Tommy's fever broke an hour ago. I perched on the edge of the armchair, studying my husband's profile. Neil, I'm sorry. I should have been there. He turned to face me then, his eyes hard. You're always sorry, Fran, but nothing ever changes. That's not fair, I protested. I work hard to provide for this family. Neil laughed bitterly. And what good is that if you're never here? The kids barely know you anymore. His words hit me like a physical blow. That's not true, I whispered, but even as I said it, I wondered if he was right. Neil stood up abruptly. I'm going to bed. We can talk about this in the morning. As he walked away, leaving me alone in the darkened living room, I realized that my perfect day had turned into a nightmare, and something told me this was just the beginning. The next morning, I woke to an empty bed and the sound of Neil rummaging in the kitchen. I steeled myself for the conversation ahead and made my way downstairs. Morning, I said, trying to keep my voice light. Neil grunted in response, not looking up from his coffee. Neil, we need to talk about last night. He sighed, finally meeting my eyes. What's there to talk about, Fran? You made your choice? My choice? I felt my temper rising. I didn't choose between my job and my family. I'm trying to do both. Neil slammed his mug down, coffee sloshing onto the counter. Well, you're failing at one of them. Do you even know what's going on in your kids' lives anymore? His words stung, but I refused to back down. Of course I do. Just because I'm not here every minute doesn't mean I'm not involved. Oh, really? Neil's voice dripped with sarcasm. What's Tommy's favorite subject in school right now? When was Lily's last dance recital? I opened my mouth to respond, then closed it again. The truth was, I didn't know. Neil nodded, a bitter smile on his face. That's what I thought. That's not fair, I protested. I'm working hard to give them a better life. 
They don't need a better life, Fran. They need their mother. We glared at each other across the kitchen island, years of resentment bubbling to the surface. I can't do this anymore, Neil said finally, his voice quieter but no less angry. I'm tired of being a single parent in a two-parent household. My heart clenched. What are you saying? Before he could answer, my phone rang. I glanced at the screen. It was Richard. Don't you dare answer that, Neil warned. I hesitated, torn between my responsibilities at work and the crisis unfolding in my kitchen. If you take that call, Fran, we're done. I mean it. With shaking hands, I declined the call. There. Are you happy now? Neil laughed humorlessly. No, Fran, I'm not happy. I haven't been happy for a long time. The front door opened, and our children's voices filled the house. Neil and I quickly composed ourselves as Tommy and Lily burst into the kitchen. Mom, you're home, Lily exclaimed, throwing her arms around me. I hugged her tightly, fighting back tears. I am, sweetie. I missed you. As I helped the kids with breakfast, I couldn't shake the feeling that something fundamental had shifted in my marriage. Neil barely spoke, his eyes distant as he mechanically went through the motions of the morning routine. Later that day, I was in my home office when I overheard Neil on the phone in the hallway. I don't know, Sarah. Things are really tense right now. He was saying, his voice low. No, I haven't told her about, you know, it's not the right time. My blood ran cold. Who was Sarah, and what hadn't Neil told me? I waited until he hung up, before confronting him. Who's Sarah? Neil's face paled. She's, she's just a co-worker. We've been working on a project together. And what haven't you told me? I pressed, my heart pounding. Neil ran a hand through his hair, looking everywhere but at me. It's nothing, Fran. Just work stuff. But I could see the guilt in his eyes, the way he fidgeted with his wedding ring. In that moment, I knew our marriage was in far more trouble than I'd realized. Neil, I said, my voice barely above a whisper. Are you having an affair? The silence that followed was deafening. Neil opened his mouth, closed it, then opened it again. But before he could answer, my phone rang once more. This time, it was the kids' school. As I answered the call, my eyes locked with Neil's. The look on his face told me everything I needed to know, and I felt my world crumbling around me. The hotel room felt cold and impersonal as I stared at my laptop, trying to focus on the presentation I'd be giving tomorrow. But my mind kept drifting back home, to Neil and the kids. It had been three days since I'd left for this business trip, and the tension from our last argument still lingered in the air. My phone buzzed, and I felt a mixture of relief and anxiety when I saw it was Tommy calling. Hey, sweetie, I answered, forcing cheerfulness into my voice. How are you? Hi, Mom, Tommy said, his voice small and uncertain. When are you coming home? My heart clenched. In two days, honey. Is everything okay? There was a pause, and I could hear Lily's voice in the background. Yeah, I guess, Tommy finally replied. It's just, Dad's been acting weird. I sat up straighter, my mom instincts on high alert. Weird how? He's not home much, Lily chimed in, having apparently grabbed the phone from her brother. And when he is, he's always on his phone or leaving to run errands. A cold feeling settled in my stomach. Have you two been alone a lot? Mrs. Johnson from next door has been checking on us, Tommy said. But yeah, kinda. I closed my eyes, fighting back a wave of anger and fear. Okay, listen to me, I said, keeping my voice calm. I want you both to go to Mrs. Johnson's house right now. Tell her I called and asked her to keep you there until I can reach your father. Can you do that for me? After getting their agreement and making sure they were safely with our neighbor, I dialed Neil's number. It went straight to voicemail. Neil, I said, my voice shaking with barely contained fury. Call me back immediately. We need to talk about why our children are home alone while you're out God knows where. I paced the hotel room, my mind racing. Was Neil with Sarah? Had he abandoned our family for her? The thought made me sick. An hour passed with no word from Neil. I called Mrs. Johnson, who confirmed the kids were safe with her. Then I did something I never thought I'd do. I called Neil's office. Hello, this is Francesca, Neil's wife, I said when his assistant answered. I'm trying to reach him about an urgent family matter. Is he there? I'm sorry, Mrs. Carter, but Neil called in sick today the assistant replied, sounding confused. He said he had a bad case of the flu. The lie hit me like a physical blow. I see, I managed to say. Thank you. I hung up and sank onto the bed, my whole body trembling. 
McNeil wasn't sick, he wasn't working late, he was... What? Running around with Sarah while our children sat at home alone? My phone buzzed again. A text from Neil. Sorry. Was in a meeting. Kids are fine. Don't worry. The casual dismissal of my concerns pushed me over the edge. I dialed his number again, and this time he picked up. Neil, where the hell are you? I demanded without preamble. Fran, calm down, he said, his voice maddeningly calm. I told you, everything's fine. Everything is not fine, I shouted. Our children are alone. You lied to your work about being sick, and you're off doing God knows what with God knows who. There was a long pause. When Neil spoke again, his voice was cold. You're one to talk about abandoning our family, Fran. How many nights have you been away this month? That's different, and you know it, I hissed. I'm working, Neil. What's your excuse? Another pause. Then, maybe I needed a break, too, Fran. Maybe I'm tired of being the one who's always there while you get to escape. His words hit me like a slap. Is that what this is? Punishment? Or is it just an excuse to be with Sarah? I heard Neil's sharp intake of breath. How do you know about Sarah? So it's true, I whispered, feeling like the floor had dropped out from under me. You're having an affair. Fran, it's not. It's complicated, Neil stammered. But I'd heard enough. I'm coming home, I said, my voice eerily calm. And when I get there, Neil, you'd better be prepared to explain yourself to me and our children. Because this, this ends now. I hung up and immediately started packing my bags. As I booked the first flight home, I felt a strange mix of rage, heartbreak, and determination. Whatever happened next, one thing was clear. Nothing would ever be the same again. The conference room erupted in applause as I concluded my presentation. Smiles and nods of approval surrounded me, but the victory felt hollow. My mind was back home, with Tommy and Lily, wondering if Neil had kept his word about being there for them. Exceptional work, Francesca, my boss, Richard, beamed. You've exceeded all expectations in your new role. I forced a smile. Thank you, Richard. I'm glad it's been well received. As my colleagues filed out, Richard held me back. Fran, I know this promotion has been challenging, but you're thriving. We're considering you for an even more senior position. My heart raced but not from excitement. That's, that's wonderful, Richard. Can I have some time to think about it? He looked surprised but nodded. Of course, take the weekend. We'll discuss it on Monday. Back in my hotel room, I stared at my phone, my finger hovering over Neil's number. We hadn't spoken since our heated exchange three days ago. Taking a deep breath, I dialed. Fran, Neil's voice was guarded. Is everything okay? I, I don't know, I admitted. How are the kids? They're fine. We had pizza night yesterday. Lily got an A on her science project. The casual normalcy of his words stung. I'd miss so much. Neil, we need to talk. About us. About Sarah. About everything. Silence stretched between us. Finally, Neil sighed. I know, but not over the phone. When are you coming home? Tomorrow, I said. I'm cutting the trip short. Fran, you can't keep doing that. Your job. My job isn't more important than our family. I interrupted, surprising myself with the vehemence in my voice. Another pause. Okay, Neil said softly. We'll talk tomorrow. After hanging up, I sat on the bed, overwhelmed by the weight of everything. My career was soaring, but at what cost? I thought of all the moments I'd missed. Lily's dance recitals, Tommy's baseball games, family dinners that had become increasingly rare. A knock at the door startled me. It was Jenna, a colleague I'd grown close to over the past few months. Hey, superstar! She grinned. We're all heading out for drinks to celebrate. You coming? I hesitated, torn between professional obligations and personal needs. I, I can't, Jenna. I need to pack. I'm heading home early. Jenna's smile faded. Fran, is everything okay? You've seemed distracted all week. Before I could stop myself, everything came pouring out. The fights with Neil, my suspicions about Sarah, the guilt over neglecting my children— Jenna listened, her face a mix of sympathy and concern. Oh, Fran, she said when I finished. I had no idea. But listen, you can't blame yourself for everything. You're an amazing mom and a brilliant professional. It's not your fault if Neil can't handle your success. Her words, meant to comfort, hit me like a punch to the gut. Was that really how I came across? So focused on my career that I'd neglected everything else? Thanks, Jenna. I managed. But I think... I think I've lost sight of what's truly important. After Jenna left, I sat at the desk and pulled out a notepad. On one side I wrote career, on the other, family. 
As I began listing pros and cons, tears blurred my vision. My phone buzzed, a text from Tommy. Miss you, Mom. Can't wait till you're home. In that moment, clarity washed over me. I knew what I had to do. I picked up my phone and dialed Richard's number. Richard? It's Francesca. I've made a decision about that senior position. As I spoke, I felt a weight lifting off my shoulders. For the first time in months, I was certain I was making the right choice. Whatever happened with Neil, whatever challenges lay ahead, I knew where my priorities needed to be. Tomorrow, I'd go home and face the music. But tonight, I'd sleep easier knowing I was finally putting my family first. The taxi pulled up to our house, and I felt a mix of relief and apprehension. I'd spent the entire flight rehearsing what I'd say to Neil, how we'd work through this rough patch. But as I approached the front door, an eerie silence enveloped me. Neil? Tommy? Lily? I called out, my voice echoing through the empty rooms. No response. Panic rising, I rushed from room to room, finding nothing but unmade beds and half-empty closets. In the kitchen, a yellow sticky note on the fridge caught my eye. Neil's hasty scrawl read, Kids are at Mrs. Johnson's. We need to talk. I'll call you. My hands shook as I dialed Mrs. Johnson's number. Francesca, dear, she answered. The children are fine. Neil dropped them off yesterday, said there was a family emergency. Yesterday, I choked out. How long were you supposed to keep them? A pause. Well, Neil wasn't specific. Is everything all right? I mumbled some excuse and hung up, my mind reeling. Neil had left our children with a neighbor indefinitely? What kind of family emergency could possibly justify this? As if on cue, my phone buzzed with a text from Neil. I'm sorry. I couldn't do it anymore. I'm with Sarah. We'll figure out arrangements for the kids later. The world tilted on its axis. I stumbled to the couch, reading and rereading the message, unable to process the casual cruelty of his words. A knock at the door jolted me back to reality. It was Tommy and Lily, faces bright with excitement at seeing me home early. Mom, Lily cried, throwing herself into my arms. We missed you so much. Tommy, ever the observant one, furrowed his brow. Where's Dad? Mrs. Johnson said he had to go away for a while. I swallowed hard, forcing a smile. Your father, he had to take care of something. Squar but don't worry. I'm here now. As I helped them unpack, my mind raced. How could I tell them their father had abandoned us? How could I protect them from the pain I was feeling? That night, after tucking the kids in, I sat at the kitchen table staring at Neil's note. Anger, betrayal, and fear warred within me. I thought about calling him, demanding explanations, but what good would that do? Instead, I pulled out my laptop and started researching. Divorce lawyers, child custody laws, financial advisors. With each click, my resolve strengthened. Neil might have walked out on us, but I wouldn't let him destroy our family. As dawn broke, I had a plan. I'd fight for full custody, ensure financial stability for the kids, and rebuild our lives, with or without Neil. My phone buzzed again. Neil, can we talk? I want to explain. I stared at the message, my finger hovering over the reply button. Part of me wanted to lash out, to hurt him as deeply as he'd hurt me, but a cooler, more determined part knew that engaging now would only complicate things. Instead, I typed, all communication goes through my lawyer from now on. Expect to hear from them soon. As I hit send, I felt a strange mix of sadness and empowerment. The life I'd known was over, shattered by Neil's betrayal. But from the ashes, a stronger, more resilient Francesca was emerging. I heard stirring upstairs. The kids would be awake soon. Taking a deep breath, I stood up, ready to face whatever challenges lay ahead. Neil might have given up on our family, but I never would. As I started preparing breakfast, my mind clear and focused for the first time in months, I made a silent vow, to my children, to myself, and to the future we'd build together. We would not just survive this, we would thrive. The coffee maker beeped, and I poured myself a cup, feeling the warmth seep into my hands. Outside, the sun was rising, painting the sky in hues of hope. It was a new day, the first day of our new life, and I was ready for it. The shrill ring of my phone pierced the quiet morning. Neil's name flashed on the screen, and my heart raced. It had been a week since he'd left, a week of sleepless nights and tear-filled days. With trembling fingers, I answered. Fran! Neil's voice was unnervingly calm. We need to talk about the kids. I gripped the phone tighter. Now you want to talk? After abandoning them without a word? I didn't abandon them, he snapped. I left them with Mrs. Johnson. I knew you'd be home soon. 
That's not the point, Neil. My voice rose, and I glanced nervously at the stairs, hoping the kids wouldn't wake. You left our children with a neighbor indefinitely. Do you have any idea what that's done to them, to me? A heavy sigh crackled through the line. I'm sorry, Fran. I didn't mean for things to happen this way. But Sarah and I— Don't. I cut him off, bile rising in my throat. Don't you dare talk about her to me. She's part of my life now, Fran. You're going to have to accept that. The casual way he said it, as if he were discussing a new job or a haircut, made something snap inside me. Accept it? You want me to accept that you've thrown away our family for some— some fling? It's not a fling. Neil's voice hardened. I love her, Fran. I've never felt this way before. The words hit me like a physical blow. I stumbled to the kitchen counter, gripping it for support. What about our children, Neil? What about the vows we made? The kids will adjust, he said, maddeningly reasonable. And vows? Sometimes people change, Fran. You changed when you got that promotion. You were never home, always working. What did you expect? Hot tears spilled down my cheeks. So this is my fault? Because I dared to have a career? No, it's not. Look, I didn't call to argue. I want to see the kids this weekend. I'll pick them up Friday after school. Absolutely not, I hissed. You don't get to waltz in and out of their lives like nothing happened. They're my children too, Fran. You can't keep them from me. Watch me, I spat, then hung up. My hands shook as I set the phone down. The unfairness of it all threatened to overwhelm me. Neil had betrayed us, left us, and now he wanted to play happy families on the weekends? I heard movement upstairs. The kids were awake. Wiping my eyes, I tried to compose myself, but as I reached for the cereal bowls, a wave of dizziness washed over me. The room spun, and I found myself on the kitchen floor, gasping for air. Mom? Tommy's worried voice came from the doorway. Mom, are you okay? I looked up to see both my children staring at me, fear etched on their young faces. In that moment, I realized I couldn't do this alone. I couldn't be both mother and father, couldn't shield them from the pain while dealing with my own. I'm okay, sweetie, I managed, pulling myself up, just a little tired. But as I hugged them close, I knew I was far from okay. The weight of everything, Neil's betrayal, the impending custody battle, the uncertain future crashed down on me. I needed help. I needed support. Most of all, I needed to be strong for Tommy and Lily. With shaking hands, I reached for my phone again. This time, I dialed my parents' number. Mom? My voice cracked. I need you. Can you come? As I explained the situation through tears, I felt a tiny spark of hope. I wasn't alone in this fight. And Neil? Neil would learn that he couldn't just walk away from his responsibilities without consequences. The kids clung to me, their small arms a reminder of what I was fighting for. Whatever came next, I would face it head on for them, for our family, for the life we deserved. The doorbell rang, and I steeled myself for what was to come. Opening the door, I found Neil's parents, Martha and George, their faces etched with concern and confusion. Francesca, dear, Martha began, her voice trembling. What's going on? Neil's not answering our calls, and when we stopped by your house, the neighbors said— I ushered them inside, my heart heavy. You'd better sit down— I said, leading them to the living room, where my own parents were already waiting. As I recounted Neil's betrayal and abandonment, Martha's face crumpled, while George's reddened with anger. My mother reached out, squeezing my hand in silent support. I can't believe it, George muttered, shaking his head. Our son, how could he do this to you? To the children? Martha dabbed at her eyes with a tissue. We raised him better than this, Francesca. I'm so sorry. Their genuine shock and remorse hit me harder than I expected. I'd been bracing for denial, for them to take Neil's side. Instead, their support washed over me like a bomb. We'll talk to him, George said firmly. Make him see reason. I shook my head. I appreciate that, but I don't think it'll help. Neil's made his choice. Just then my phone buzzed. A text from Neil. I'm coming to get the kids. Be there in ten. Panic surged through me. He's on his way, I choked out. He wants to take the children. My father stood up, his face set. He's not taking those kids anywhere. The next ten minutes were a blur of activity. My parents ushered Tommy and Lily upstairs, while Neil's parents positioned themselves near the front door, ready to intercept their son. When Neil's car pulled up, I felt like I might be sick. But as he approached the house, a strange calm settled over me. This was it. The moment I'd been dreading and preparing for. 
Neil's face registered shock when he saw his parents. Mom? Dad? What are you doing here? We could ask you the same thing, son. George's voice was cold. What do you think you're doing? Neil's eyes darted to me. I'm here to see my children. Fran can't keep them from me. You left them, I said, my voice steadier than I felt. You abandoned our family for another woman. You don't get to waltz back in like nothing happened. I didn't abandon them, Neil shouted. I left them with a neighbor. I knew you'd be back soon. Martha stepped forward, her eyes brimming with tears. Neil, how could you? Those children need their father. They'll still have me, Neil insisted. Sarah and I, we can provide a loving home. Sarah? George's voice thundered. You're throwing away your family for some, some home wrecker? Neil's face hardened. Don't talk about her like that. She understands me in a way Fran never did. The words hit me like a physical blow, but I refused to let him see how much they hurt. Understanding doesn't excuse betrayal, Neil. You made vows. You have responsibilities. Vows? Neil laughed bitterly. What about your vows, Fran? You were never here, always working, always putting your career first. That's not fair, my mother interjected. Francesca has been an amazing mother and wife. Neil's eyes flashed. Stay out of this. It's between me and Fran. No, I said firmly. It's not just between us anymore. It you involved our children the moment you walked out that door. I could see Neil's resolve wavering as he looked from face to face, realizing he was outnumbered. But then his expression hardened again. Fine, he spat. Have it your way. But this isn't over, Fran. I'll see you in court. As Neil stormed back to his car, I felt my knees buckle. My parents rushed to support me, while Martha and George looked on, their faces a mix of shame and sorrow. I'm so sorry, Martha whispered. We'll do whatever we can to help. George nodded firmly. We're here for you and the kids, Francesca. Whatever you need. As the reality of what just happened sank in, I realized this was just the beginning. The real battle, for custody, for financial support, for our children's future, was still to come. But looking at the supportive faces around me, I knew I wasn't in this fight alone. Taking a deep breath, I straightened my shoulders. Thank you, I said. I'm going to need all the help I can get. Six months had passed since Neil walked out, and our lives had settled into a new rhythm. My parents had moved into a nearby apartment, becoming a constant source of support and love for the kids. Neil's parents, true to their word, had been equally supportive, often stepping in to help with child care and emotional support. As I sat in the courtroom, waiting for our final custody hearing to begin, I felt a strange mix of anxiety and determination. Neil sat across the aisle, looking uncomfortable in his suit. Sarah, his new friend, was noticeably absent. Our lawyer, a formidable woman named Diane, leaned over. Remember, Francesca, stay calm. We have a strong case. I nodded, my eyes fixed on the judge as she entered the courtroom. This was it, the moment that would define our future. As the proceedings began, I listened with growing disbelief as Neil's lawyer painted a picture of me as a career-obsessed mother who had neglected her family. They brought up my long hours, my business trips, even my recent promotion. When it was our turn, Diane stood, her voice clear and confident. Your Honor, my client has been nothing but a devoted mother. Her career success doesn't diminish her parenting. It enhances it. She provides stability, financial security, and a strong role model for her children. She then presented evidence of Neil's abandonment, his sporadic visits, and his failure to provide consistent child support. As she spoke, I saw Neil's face grow increasingly pale. The judge listened intently, her expression unreadable. When both sides had presented their cases, she called a brief recess to consider her decision. Those fifteen minutes felt like an eternity. I closed my eyes, thinking of Tommy and Lily, of all we'd been through. Whatever happened, I knew I'd never stop fighting for them. When the judge returned, the courtroom fell silent. After careful consideration, she began, I've reached a decision. Primary custody will be awarded to Francesca Carter, with Neil Carter granted visitation rights every other weekend and shared holidays. Relief washed over me like a tidal wave. I barely heard the rest of the judge's words as she outlined the child support arrangements and other details. As we left the courtroom, Neil approached me, his face a mix of emotions. Fran, I... I'm sorry for everything. I looked at him, this man I'd once loved, now a stranger. I'm not the one you need to apologize to, Neil. It's our children who've suffered the most. 
He nodded, looking genuinely remorseful for the first time. I know, I want to make things right with them. Can we, can we work something out? Beyond what the court ordered? I considered his words carefully. For the kids' sake, I'm willing to try. But you need to prove yourself, Neil. They need consistency, not just promises. As Neil walked away, I felt a weight lift from my shoulders. We had a long road ahead, but for the first time in months, I felt hope for our future. Outside the courthouse, my parents and Neil's were waiting. Their faces lit up when they saw my expression. We won, I said simply, and was engulfed in a group hug. As we drove home, my mother squeezed my hand. I'm so proud of you, sweetheart. You've shown such strength through all of this. I smiled, thinking of the journey we'd been on. I couldn't have done it without all of you. Walking into our house, my house now, I was greeted by the excited shouts of Tommy and Lily. As I hugged them close, I realized that this was the true victory. Not the court decision, but the love and resilience of our little family. That night, as I tucked the kids into bed, Lily looked up at me with serious eyes. Mom, are we going to be okay? I kissed her forehead, my heart full. Yes, sweetheart. We're going to be more than okay. We're going to be wonderful. As I closed their bedroom door, I felt a sense of peace wash over me. The road ahead wouldn't be easy, but we'd face it together. Neil's betrayal had shaken our world, but it hadn't broken us. Instead, it had revealed a strength I never knew I had. Tomorrow would bring new challenges, but tonight, surrounded by the love of my family, I knew we could handle anything life threw our way. We weren't just survivors. We were thrivers. And our story was far from over.